My name is Leonard Botello. I'm the owner and pitmaster of Truth Barbecue in Houston and Brenham, Texas, and this is Truth in Houston. So the line starts up before we open up. It's about, I think it's like 11:10 right now. Um, nice, sunny, 97 degree October day in Houston, Texas. Uh, let's take a look inside. So this is the door that we walked in here. This is all to go orders and bakery orders. Uh, we started doing curbside and um, to go orders during the pandemic. Um, so they just turn and burn out this door right here. This is the bakery. Then over here to your left is our merch wall. We bottle all these sauces and pickles, onions and everything in house. We get our rubs made for us. All of our hats and t-shirts are made from a company up the street. I do, I try to do everything local as possible. Again, this is our to-go bakery area. These are all our cakes. Looks like we got banana caramel, chocolate, carrot cake, coconut cake, red velvet. There's tres leches in the back and banana pudding. Uh, my favorite is definitely the carrot and the coconut. Um, we got Melissa back there. We got Aaron back there. We got Robert right here. We got Jerry right there. Wave, Jerry. <laughs> we'll come behind the line. This is Ashley, but she likes to go by Cashley. This is Steven. This is Mario right here. We got Aqua in the middle. We got Daydream down here. Daydream's been with us since Brenham. Diana has been with us for a couple months now. She's one of our cutters. Daydream's one of our lead cutters. He's plating up whole hog sandwich right now. We got brisket on the board, turkey on there. And this is a sprint from the finish. Here, I'll get him a new brisket so you can get it out. Daydream, let me get you. Let me switch that out with Diana's and I'll get you a fresh one. All big boys in here today. So about how much are you guys producing uh, They had a hundred and either 115 or 120 briskets on last night. And then 125 racks of ribs, had a 140 pound pig, 12 pork butts. I don't know how many pounds of sausage because they just keep replenishing, replenishing, replenishing. Uh, probably 25 turkeys. Um, they filled up a pit and a half of beef ribs. It's like a little meat factory. <laughs> Let's go check out the kitchen in the pit room. And this is Patty over here. Yeah, that's all Patty's domain, plus all the catering and all special events. Patty runs all that. This is all the kitchen. Jared runs our kitchen back here. It's a little bit smaller than we like, but we make it work. This is one of our walk-ins. 
Melissa's already back in the walk-in. She's filling up pickles right now. <laughs> There's overflow of bread, plus the bread that's in the walk-in. Then we have our beer cooler back here. This is all our dry storage. That's Elliot. He's taking care of probably maintenance stuff with AC right now because it's still 80 degrees, 90 degrees in Texas. And this is our pit room. So there's 5,000 gallon tanks in here. And then our mill scale for overflow is outside. So that's our 6-1 plus our hog pit. Um, they're all filled up right now. They are probably on their first rotation in briskets. Um, this is Cersei. He's been with me since 2015 in Brenham. This is Caesar. He's been with me for about three years. Uh, they're usually on our morning shift for brisket. You can go back there. So they're going to go through and foil cap all the front ends and the back ends that are curling up if they are but they've been watching the temps really good, so there's not much curling on the back ends, but they're gonna be proactive and start capping those ends so they don't take on too much heat. Um, so does each smoker cook um, No, we cook all proteins in each, pro in each smoker individually. So they're all filled up with brisket right now. Um, ribs came off this morning. Our rib guys get here at one o'clock in the morning. They usually leave around eight or nine in the morning. Brisket guys get here at six o'clock. They load briskets at 6.30. They work until two, and the second brisket shift comes in at two o'clock, and then they finish off the briskets, and they're passing on with the rib guys. So they're 24 hours around the clock. So all of these bris all these pits right now have briskets on them. These guys are making sausage right now. This is our sausage machine, Sebastian. <laughs> He's making pepper jack sausage right now. And they're just gonna reload this. They're gonna hang it all, let it hang cure for 24 to 48 hours. Then on Sunday, they do all their cold smoking with their sausage. So we do three batches of sausage, four batches of sausage, 110 pounds per batch, three times a week and then they cold smoke two times a week. Um, we just prefer to cold smoke the sausage because it double cooks the casing on the, in, on the outside so it's not too chewy. It's got a nice bite through there. Um, this room is moving pretty much seven days a week, 24 hours a day. Um, it's a monster, especially coming from two, two pits in Brenham. Um, this is a completely different operation. Um, and all these guys that cook here, they rotate up, up in Brenham as well. So all of our staff in Brenham and in Houston, they both work both places to keep familiar faces. How far is Brenham from here? Uh, it's about an hour 15. If you're going the speed limit, probably get there in 45 minutes if you needed to. <laughs> um, so they start the fires on Monday at 5 a.m. and they go all the way until Sunday at about 4 p.m. Um, that's when the fires die out. So there's about a 12 hour time frame of how long the, the fires are down. Um, so they're constantly burning wood 24 hours a day, uh, all week long. We go through about, I would say eight cords, eight cords every nine days or so. Uh, we get everything from cheap firewood. I've been working with Javi and his dad for, I guess since 2015, yeah. Uh, that's the most consistent wood that I've ever used. They cure it for about 12 to 14 months, about 12 to 13% moisture reading in there, and it's always perfect. Uh, I don't touch anybody else's wood. I only use Hobby's wood, that's it. So we'll go into the dining room.
So we've got them to the like very particular about cor color coordination. So there's not like a wave of brown or whatever. So they kind of separate all the colors in the sides to make sure there's not multiple sides with yellow on there. They have some green and then they put pickles, onions and everything in the corner for pops of color. So this building was actually already a standing building. It was an automotive shop, it was a barbecue restaurant, then it was a bar, and then it was Truth Barbecue. We took over the building in 2019, 2018, 2019. We opened July 2019. Um, we gutted the whole building. Everything that is in place was kind of like where everything was previously. So like the bathroom was where the bathroom was, the kitchen was where the kitchen was, and then the pit room was actually a dance floor bar area. This was the regular entryway right here that you would come in. Um, and then over here, when we're going into our dining room, there was actually another bar. This is actually Barbecue Lou. He was the uh, first guy to finish the last top 50 on Texas Monthly. And how fast did you do it? Started like November 3rd and finished uh, December 12th. <laughs> it was, yeah. It was crazy. So he did all, all 50 that quick. <laughs> uh, so this area was actually another bar in the building before, and you see where these this part comes down right here. All of this was a private dining room before COVID, but then post COVID, nobody wanted to be locked in a room together, so we tore that out and we put a bar in here and I really love bourbon. Um, so we have a good allocation of bourbon. Um, we got a great beer selection. We got a lot of wines that pair good with barbecue. Um, I can't really drink a lot of beer and eat a lot of barbecue. So bourbon or wine is kind of the way that we try to pair everything up. So this is kind of like a little fun addition to the restaurant, um, a little bit change of pace for for barbecue. Uh, we can fit about 165 people in here comfortably. That's what the fire marshal likes us to have. Um, but we've done like parking lot parties that are like, we got one coming up in February. We have a bunch of vendors coming out, uh, and a bunch of friends and family coming out and we'll cut off the parking lot. We'll barricade the parking lot and we'll bring the pits outside and there will be a band. And I think that is gonna be like six to seven hundred people it's like people in and out of the restaurant everybody outside eating barbecue it's like one big fun party for a rodeo kickoff so we do a lot of stuff like that uh, those are always our fun ones that we like to do because it brings everybody together and they eat like family style everybody gets to throw down and hang out but yeah this is our dining room um it's funny it's a big space and if we go back out front you can see the line is kind of like building up building up So they queue up all in there, they double snake around, and then they come back on the outside of the building. Um, and it's a balancing act because if I tell these guys like, go and let them loose, they'll cut like the friggin' wind. And then the dining room will be completely filled up and then people will be standing around with their trays. So we have to basically control the flow of the dining room to make sure that there's enough seats. So we try to fill it up as fast as possible and then try to like coast it to make sure that when people are getting up, the tables are getting bust and immediately more people are going into the seats. So it's a very hard balancing act. And a lot of people will think that we're trying to build the line up and that we need more cutters on the block. But if I tell the cutters to just let loose, they'll be filled with people just standing around with food. So that's a lot of, a lot of people don't know that information about um, barbecue and like moving the line. There is a very tedious aspect to it to make sure that everybody's comfortable in the dining room and everybody's getting their food on a, a, at an appropriate time. Also, making sure that the food is coming out fast enough because as you see how long this line is, 
from getting the, the briskets out of the hot box, getting it on the block, interacting with the customer, going over to sides, getting your sides, getting pickles, onions, assembling the tray, getting bread, then going to the register, then getting to the Coke station, then getting to your table is a big span, so they have to make sure that it goes out all on time. These are all of my favorites. Uh, you have your basic Trinity, you have fatty brisket, pork spare ribs, we have our pepper jack sausage, and then my favorite favorite is the turkey breast. Um, house made pickles, house made onions, Martin's potato bread, tater tot casserole, and Brussels sprouts. Those are all my favorites. So that's a little quick tour of Truth Houston. You can find us at 110 South Heights Boulevard on the corner of Heights and Washington. About seven minutes from downtown, or you can go to my favorite location um, in Brenham. That's where everything started. Small two table restaurant, two pits out there. That's like the OG. So if you notice, if you go to that one, all of the textures and all the aspects from that one where it started are all in this building here. Like all the reclaimed wood, all the corrugated metal. We wanted to make this one feel a lot like Brenham, the original one. So if you get the chance, go to the Brenham one and then come to the Houston one. So thank you guys for coming out. I really appreciate it and hope to see you guys.